So, the Spider X Pro from Data Color. Can it match my two screens, as well as obviously getting a color accurate uh, profile for them? And is it actually better than the solution I've been using for the last few years? few months ago got an email from the guys at uh, Datacolor and they wanted to know if I'd be interested in reviewing or testing the Spider X Pro which is their latest and greatest screen calibration tool. Um, I said I was and um, they actually then took freaking ages to send the thing to me and uh, meanwhile um, our daughter arrived and uh, so I'm a bit busier these days but also not being uh, out on trips and uh, on a day like today when it's raining outside it seems like a good opportunity to uh, actually do that little review and talk to you guys about this. This is not a new idea to me having one of these I've been using a competitor product from a company called X-Rite and it's called a Colour Monkey. I've been using this for a number of years and it works really quite well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set up the X-Rite. I've uh, removed all the software from the other calibrator and I've set the two screens to their factory defaults. And I'm going to go through the process of calibrating the screen with this guy. I'm going to have a look at the results then I'm going to wipe all the software off again and we're going to go through and calibrate with this one and we'll have a little look and see if this is better if it's faster if there's a reason that I would want to buy this rather than keep this one that I've been using for a few years since data color clearly sent these out to everyone and there are loads of videos out there by now um, telling you how this works and what it does I thought I'd do something a little bit different but just in case you haven't seen any of those other videos just briefly why would you want one of these well the main point is it allows you to adjust your screen colors so that they are accurate why would you want to do that well a lot of people talk about printing as one of the main reasons um, that's true but there's more to it with printing and that's a much more involved process to my mind the main reason you'd want one of these is so that when you're editing a photo for example this hedgehog here that was in the garden a couple of days ago when you're editing that photo you want the colors that you see on your screen to be as accurate as possible so that when you're adjusting things you're not making it look daft on let's say other people's devices let's say I upload that onto my website or onto Instagram or something and the colors on my screen are all all messed up and I've adjusted it so it looks good to me it might look terrible on everyone else's screen now the other reason and you can see here I've got two screens is that if you've got two screens you might want them to be matched it's quite nice if the colors are actually the same on the two screens because you can drag things between them and it doesn't look weird whereas with this on my Dell screen here compared to this Lenovo I think you can see pretty clearly I hope you can see pretty clearly on the video that they're pretty different and I find that really annoying so just for my enjoyment of using the computer I want to match the colors on these two screens so that when I drag something across it doesn't look weird basically I want to see if it's worth getting one of these new ones or whether I'm perfectly fine with this old one that I've been using for, for years now
So now we place the, um, the calibration tool on the screen. So that's both screens calibrated now using the Datacolor Spider X Pro. And they do look a lot better now, much closer match to each other. And on the main screen, on the editing screen, that looks far, far nicer as an image. And uh, it's not sort of oversaturated and over bright, which uh, monitors tend to be by default, which is very pretty in some respect, but when you're editing photos or editing video, that's really bad because what it means is you'll compensate for it and what you'll actually produce when, you, when looked at on other screens will look a bit kind of muddy and washed out. It was very quick. I was impressed by the speed with which, uh, with which it uh, did the calibration. I quite liked the fact that it asked me whether I wanted to calibrate another monitor straight away afterwards and use the same settings. Um, I found setting the luminance a bit of a pain. It wanted to set some really, really high brightness, which I know from this screen would actually result in an absolute catastrophe. So for some reason, this seemed to think I needed to set 180 um, luminance, whereas I know that 140 is right for in here from previous measurements uh, with other tools. So yeah, I'm not impressed by that. Something I do really like about this is this little feature that it had where at the end of the calibration it told me how much of the colour space my monitor was now able to, uh, to show. So this one can show 98% of um, sRGB and this one 94 or 95. So now we will undo all of that hard work. We will uninstall the software for this guy. We will reset the screens to their factory defaults. And then I'll put the Color Monkey software on. I will calibrate using the Color Monkey and we'll have a quick look at uh, how that looks. And uh, I'll give you my thoughts on the two color calibrators and uh, whether I'm gonna be buying myself one of these or sticking to the one I've currently got. <laughs> So while that's calibrating, here is a shameless plug for calendars. I am selling calendars again this year and pre-order is open until the 22nd of November. Now this is last year's calendar because I don't have any of this year's calendar ready yet to show you. But if you click on the screen right here, that will take you to my website and you can have a little look at the 2021 calendar. Yeah, lots of you ordered that last year and that was really awesome. And uh, calendars are awesome Christmas presents. So uh, yeah, looking for Christmas presents? Want some nice photos on your wall or to give away to someone? Look no further, calendars for sale. So that's the two uh, displays, both uh, calibrated up using the X-Rite Color Monkey. And uh, then we've got our little hedgehog on both of them. And actually, uh, they're not that well matched, are they? That's uh, a bit disappointing, actually. I would say that the color sort of saturation and sort of punchiness of the, the Dell screen looks nicer but that might not be right. Um, or it might be that this one's desaturated, but they're different. To talk about these two in turn, let's first talk about the Datacolor Spider X Pro. It's fast. It is much faster than the Color Monkey. This being a newer piece of kit, it's probably slightly newer technology. It probably is better. It wouldn't surprise me. I didn't like that it was hard to set the luminance. I didn't really understand how 
that worked. Also, it is quite a bit chunkier than the, uh, the Colour Monkey. It's not exactly huge, so probably not really an issue for anybody. Main kicker is that uh, this is expensive. So a quick Google tells me that I could have one of these for £160 here in the UK. That's quite a lot more than this uh, Colour Monkey display, which again, Google tells me I can have it for £85, so about half the price. But I know for a fact that you can get this second hand for a lot less than this, because I certainly did. It is a lot slower probably takes more than twice as long to calibrate the screen and the software seems to be kind of I don't know almost less detailed there seems to be less kind of information there but what information do you need if it calibrates your screen then it calibrates your screen but in calibrating these two screens to try and match them this has not done as good a job as the um, Spider X, so the win has to go to the Spider X Pro. I should note that both of these devices can be left plugged into the USB port, and then they've got a little app that runs in the background that can monitor the ambient light and can tweak the profile to keep your screen calibrated when the ambient light uh, changes. Now, I tend to turn that off because I'm trying to keep two screens matched and also because I've got a nice um, full spectrum daylight bulb up there and I tend to have the blinds down and that on whenever I'm editing something that I actually care about. So I'm pretty comfortable that the light level in here is the same as when I've done the measurements. So I don't bother with that, but it's an option that's there, quite useful. In terms of calibrating a single screen, which one's better? I don't think I could tell. If I wasn't looking at this screen here, I wouldn't be able to tell you. The fact is, the Colour Monkey has not done as well in calibrating the two screens to be matched to each other as the Data Colour one did, so I have to give the win to that. It's a very interesting piece of kit and uh, it's very nice. I should, of course, thank Data Colour for sending me that to review. Um, I guess they'll want it back at some point, but it's been quite interesting having a little play with it. Bottom line is, it's very nice. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get these two screens better calibrated, um, better matched than this with the Colour Monkey because I've done it before, but you know, you've got to go with what happens in your live test. The fact that I already have a solution probably means that I won't be buying myself one of these, but if you are in the market for something to calibrate your screens, it's definitely worth a look. And yeah, that's it really. I know this has been a bit of a at the desk video, not really any wildlife photography, but I can assure you there's more of that coming up. And uh, obviously at the moment with um, our daughter being very, very small, I'm not gonna be out going out on uh, particularly lots of trips or getting out with my camera that much. And so the next video I'm gonna try and get out is actually one that I've been promising for ages and ages and it is the tests with the 1.7 times converter and the 300 millimeter f2.8 lens. I'm going to try and get that one done in the next few weeks. Um, I've been really bad at uh, putting it off, but part of that has been knowing that there's going to be this time when I'm not going out and uh, I've been saving up a few projects for then and that's one of them. But uh, yeah, I hope this has been uh, interesting to to you or useful and uh, if it has been uh, please leave a comment and let me know and if you've enjoyed this content please uh, leave a like and if you enjoy these kind of videos or the wildlife photography in the field videos which I will definitely be doing more of in the future um, please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, yeah I'll see you on the next one bye for now